first lesson of our last calculus unit. In this lesson you're going to learn what the derivatives of sine and cosine functions are. Oh, and also the tangent function. So we're going to discover the derivative rules first, and then after I show you what the derivative rules are, we'll practice finding derivatives of a bunch of functions that involve trigonometric functions. So let's start by finding the derivative of sine x. So at this point in high school math, I'm guessing you're very familiar with the graph of sine x. Here it is here. And Important to note, our variable x is going to always be the angle in radians in this course. We're going to be working with our input angle being measured in radians. And our goal is to figure out the equation of the derivative of sine x. And for the first time that we're going to do this, instead of me just telling you what it is, we are going to come up with a table of what we think the slope of this function is at a bunch of points. So I have five points labeled on sine x. Those are points that make up one complete cycle of the graph of sine x. Let's start by, in this table, recording the y values of this function at each of those five points. So what's the value of sine x when x is 0? We can see that the y value is 0. So sine of 0 is 0. What's sine of pi over 2? Well, that's 1. What's sine of pi? That's back to 0. And sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And sine of 2 pi is zero. And we could have gotten these y values from the unit circle by looking at the y coordinate of where the terminal arm intersects a unit circle for each of those angles of rotation. But since we had the graph, we can just pick the y values from the graph since the y values represent the value of sine x at each of those x values. Now what we want to do is try and figure out what's the value of the derivative of sine x at each of those points. And remember the derivative tells you the slope of the function at each of those points. And the slope of the function can be represented with a tangent line. So another way of saying this, we're looking for what is the tangent slope at each of those points? Well, I know at pi over 2, there would be a horizontal tangent. And at 3 pi over 2, there would be a horizontal tangent. Since horizontal lines have a slope of 0, that tells me that at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, the slope of sine x is 0, which means the value of its derivative is 0. So at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, I know the derivative of sine x is 0. But what about at an x value of 0? pi and 2 pi. To figure those out, we're going to use an approximation technique. So if I want the slope of sine x at an x value of 0, I need to know well, what would be the slope of a tangent line that would just touch the function at that point. And to find the slope of that tangent line, we're going to use an approximation technique where we're going to use the slope of a secant line that really closely resembles the slope of that tangent line. Let me show you what I mean over in Desmos. So here's that graph of sine x. What I have is a blue secant line going through two points on sine x. And we could calculate the slope of any secant line we wanted. Any of these secant lines going through these two points on sine x, I could find the slope of that secant line. And in fact, I have that being calculated right here for you. You can find the slope of any line if you know two points on the line. So we can find the slope of any of these secant lines. And we're going to use the fact that we can calculate the slope of a secant line to hopefully be able to figure out what is the slope of this green tangent line at an x value of 0 on the function sine x. So what we're going to do, notice that the closer this black point gets to this purple point, the closer the slope of the blue secant line is going to get to matching the slope of that green tangent line. So let me move that black point closer. Notice the blue line slope is starting to get really, really close to matching the green line slope. And if I can move this infinitely close, I could find the slope of the green line, which tells me the slope of sine x, which tells me the value of the derivative of sine x at the point. So how close are we going to move that point? So part B says, estimate the instantaneous rate of change, tangent slope, of sine x at x equals 0 using a secant line. And what x values are we going to use for the secant line? We're going to use 0 and 1 one hundredth of a pi to the right of that. So let me just zoom in here so you can see how close that would actually be. So I'm going to move that point only 1 one hundredth of a pi to the right. So that's how close the point is. It's right there now. If I zoom back out, you can see actually how very, very close that point is. And the blue secant line looks like it's actually right over top of the green tangent line. That's how close of an approximation we're going to get. Let's use our slope equation just to find the slope of the secant line connecting those two points. 
And the slope of that secant line is going to be an approximation for the instantaneous rate of change of sine x at an x value of zero. So here's how I'll write it. I'll write the derivative with respect to x of the sine x function at an x value of zero is approximately equal to, and now I'm going to find the slope of the secant line. And remember slope formula, it's just change in y over change in x. So in this case, that would be equal to sine at pi over 100 minus sine of zero, right? Refining the difference in the y values for these two x values up here, divided by the change in the x values. Well, these are the x values. So just find the change in those x values. And now we will evaluate this quotient and it will give me my approximate value for the slope of the sine function at an x value of zero. I should mention, make sure you're in radian mode and then I will do the numerator, sine pi over 100 minus sine of zero. And yes, I know sine of zero is zero, so I don't really need that, but I'll write it anyway. Divided by, and then once again, make sure your denominator's in brackets, pi over 100 minus zero. And let's see what we get. We get 0.9998. That's really, really close to one. So I'm going to write, one. So our estimate for the slope of the sine function at this point is one. So over here in our table, I can write the value of the derivative at that point we think is one. If we think the slope of this tangent line is one, well, of course, at two pi, it's going to be the exact same. So at two pi, I can also put one. And then at pi, notice this line, this line looks like it has a slope of negative one. So I can estimate the value of the derivative at pi is negative one. And then let's plot all of these blue points. I'm going to now graph the derivative. So at an x value of zero, the derivative is at one. Then it goes to zero and to negative one, to zero, back to one. Notice, what does this look like? This looks like the cosine function. And in fact, the derivative of sine x is cosine. So we can conclude the derivative with respect to x of sine x equals cosine of x. So the cos x function actually tells you the slope of the sine function at any point we want. Let's do the same thing, but this time let's find the derivative of cosine of x. So I've given you the graph of cos x. Let's start by writing down the values of the cosine function at x values of 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And I can get those from looking at the y values of these points I have on the graph. So cosine of 0, we can see is 1 cosine of pi over two is zero, cosine of pi is negative one, cosine of three pi over two is zero, and cosine of two pi is one. And we could get those values either from the graph like I did, or from looking at the x coordinate of where a terminal arm intersects a unit circle as it rotates around. Now what we need to figure out is what is the value of the derivative of this function at all of those points. Remember the derivative tells us the slope of the function at those points. So I need to know what is the slope of the cosine function at all of those five points. A tangent line can be used to represent those slopes. So let me draw a tangent line, first of all, at an x value of zero, pi, and two pi. Those tangent lines are clearly all horizontal, which tells me the slope of cosine is zero at all of those points. So I could fill out zero for the value of the derivative at each of those x values. And now what we're going to do, if we read part B, it says estimate the instantaneous rate of change of cos x at, at this point here, which means we want to estimate the slope of the tangent line at that point. So we want to estimate the slope of this tangent line. And we're going to do that same way we did in the last question. We're going to calculate the slope of a secant line that connects that point right there to a point very, very, very close to it on the graph of cos x. And here's a visual demonstration of that. We're just going to find the slope of a secant line connecting that point and that point to each other. How close are we going to move it away? Once again, just one one hundredth of a pi away. So if this point, pi over two, we can think of that as an x coordinate of 50 pi over 100. That means this point's x coordinate is just going to be 51 pi over 100. And that's what this tells us right here. So let's find the slope of that secant line. So we're using the slope of the secant line to estimate the value of the derivative of cos x at an x value of pi over two. And what we're going to do is use our slope formula to find the slope of that secant line. 
and the slope formula tells me to do change in y over change in x between these two x values. This is just the interval of x values. So I'll need the value of cosine at each of those x values and then find the difference between them. And now I'll need to use my calculator to evaluate this. And my calculator is giving me a value of negative 0 0.9998. So that's about negative one. So that's our estimate for the slope of the tangent line at this point right here. And you can see that the slope of this tangent line I'm drawing looks like it would have a slope of about negative one. So I can now plug in the value of the derivative at that point is negative one, which means at this point, you could probably guess what the slope of the tangent line is, but we won't bother doing another calculation. You could see that the slope of that line is then probably one. So now if I were to graph the derivative of cos x, so let me plot these points, point zero, zero, pi over two, negative one, pi zero, three pi over two, one, and two pi zero. Notice this just looks like a sine function that's been vertically reflected. And just to help you visualize that, let me remind you what a normal sine function looks like. A normal sine function, not vertically reflected, looks like this. So notice how the blue function is just a vertical reflection of the green function. So our blue function is a vertical reflection of sine x, which means the derivative of cos is equal to negative sine x. So the derivative with respect to x of cos x is equal to negative sine x. Okay, so so far we figured out the derivative of sine x equals cos x and the derivative of cos x equals negative sine x. How about of tan x? Let's find the derivative of tan x. Okay, so we want the derivative with respect to x of tan x. And remember tan x, if you remember your quotient identity from previous math courses, we know that tan x is equal to sine x over cos x. So really all we have to do is find the derivative of sine x over cos x. And we can find the derivative of sine over sine x over cos x using our quotient rule. Since we know how to differentiate sine and cos, we can just use our quotient rule to find the derivative of this quotient. So if we want the derivative of a quotient, we do the derivative of the numerator. So the derivative of sine x is cos x times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator and the derivative of cos x is negative sine x times the numerator all over the denominator squared. So cos squared x. And if I simplify the numerator, I have cos x times cos x, that's cos squared x, minus a negative, so plus sine squared x. And if you remember your Pythagorean identity, cos squared x plus sine squared x is one. So we have one over cos squared x. Remember the reciprocal of a cosine function is called the secant function. So I could write this as equal to secant squared x. So the derivative with respect to x of tan x is secant squared x. So we now know the derivative of sine cos and tan. And here are all the rules. Derivative of sine is cos, derivative of cos is negative sine, and derivative of tan is secant squared. And I put a list of all the derivative rules we know from the first unit here, just as a reminder. So feel free to pause and review these. And now let's find the derivative of some trig functions. So our first function is y equals two sine x and we wanna differentiate it. So I'll write y prime, or I could write dy over dx, doesn't matter. y prime equals, if I want the derivative of two times sine x, I just have to do two times the derivative of sine x. So two cos x. If I wanna differentiate negative three cos x, I just have to do negative three times the derivative of cos x. And the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. And I could simplify this. I have negative three times negative one times sine x. That's just three sine x. And here I have four tan x. The derivative of four times tan x would just be equal to four times the derivative of tan x. And the derivative of tan x is secant squared x. Okay, those three were easy to start off with. All we had to use were our new derivative rules for trig functions and the constant multiple rule. Let's now do some functions that are sums and differences of trig functions. So for this one, the derivative of a sum of two functions is equal to the sum of their derivatives. So just differentiate each of these two functions separately and we have our derivative. So the derivative of sine x is cos x 
plus the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. So if we simplify this, cos x plus a negative is just minus. There we have it. Part B, same principle, y prime equals, let's find the derivative of two cos x. That would be two times negative sine x minus, now let's differentiate four sine x. That would be four times the derivative of sine x, which is cos x. And then we can just do a little bit of simplifying, two times negative sine x. I would just rewrite that as negative two sine x. All right, two more examples. It says find the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at x equals three sine x at the point where x equals pi over four. So if we want the slope of the tangent line to, the, to this graph. That means we want the slope of that function at this x value, and we can find that using the value of the derivative. So I'm going to need the derivative of three sine x. That would be three cos x. And now I want the value of that derivative at pi over four. So I need to know what the value of three times cos of pi over four is. And remember, I put a little reminder over here to evaluate cos of pi over four, we can get an exact value for that because pi over four is a special angle. You will need to remember this special triangle that is the isosceles special triangle, which has angles of pi over four, pi over four, and side lengths of one, one, two. From that special triangle, I can see that cosine from pi over four would equal adjacent over hypotenuse, one over root two. So over here, I can replace cos of pi over four with one over root two. So I have three times one over root two, that's three over root two. But we should rationalize the denominator, multiply top and bottom of this by root two. So we're multiplying this by root two over root two. And that just gets the irrational number out of the denominator. So this will give me three root two in the numerator. Over in the denominator, root two times root two is root four, which is just two. So there's my final answer. That would be the slope of my original function at the x value of pi over four. Last example, find the equation of the tangent line to this curve at the point where x equals pi over six. So let me just show you what we're looking for in Desmos. So let me move this point so it's at an x value of pi over six. I want the equation of that green tangent line that touches my negative two sine x function at that point. So if I want the equation of this green line, I would need to know its slope and it's y-intercept. And to calculate the y-intercept, I would need to figure out what is the x and y-coordinate of this point. And we're given the x-coordinate of pi over six, but we'll have to calculate the y-coordinate of negative one by plugging pi over six into the original function. And we can get the slope of that tangent line by plugging pi over six into the derivative. So let's go through those steps. So we'll find the slope of the tangent first, and I find the slope of the tangent by plugging the x value pi over six into the derivative. So I need to start by differentiating f at x. So the derivative of negative two sine x would be negative two times the derivative of sine x, which is cos x. And now I need the value of this derivative at pi over six. And pi over six is also a special angle. Let me just put a reminder of that special triangle right here for you. This special triangle uh, is a half equilateral triangle. It has angles pi over three, pi over six, and side lengths two, one, root three. So if I want to figure out what is cos of pi over six, from pi over six reference, cosine would be root three over two. So in here, oh, and I forgot to plug in the x value we're doing here into my function notation. We're doing it at an x value of pi over six. So we're doing f prime at pi over six. So f prime at pi over six is equal to negative two. And then I said cos of pi over six is root three over two. And this would of course simplify. Negative two divided by two is negative one. So I just have negative root three. That's my slope. I'll call that M. M equals negative root three. Now that I have the slope of the tangent line, if I wanna write its equation, I'm going to need a point on the tangent line. So over here, I'm now going to find a point on the tangent line. The only point I would be able to calculate that I know for sure is on the tangent line is the point where the tangent line touches the original function. And I know it's gonna to touch the original function at an x value of pi over six. So to find a point on the tangent line, we'll plug that x value of pi over six into the original function. So f at pi over six equals negative two 
sine of pi over 6. And if we look at this special triangle, if I'm doing sine from this reference angle, it would be opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2. So I can replace sine of pi over 6 with a, with a half. Negative 2 times a half is negative 1. So my point on the original function that the tangent line touches is the point pi over 6, negative 1. Now that I have an xy point and my slope of m, I can now write the equation of my tangent line in the format y equals mx plus b if I solve for b. So plug in my value for y from the point, plug in my slope of negative root 3, plug in my x value of the point, and we'll isolate for b. So I have negative 1 equals, and then there's nothing really I can simplify with this product, but I could write it as a single fraction. I'll write it as negative root 3 pi over 6, and then move that to the other side, and I have negative 1 plus root 3 pi over 6 is equal to my b value. Or I could rewrite the order of those two terms just so the positive one comes first. I could rewrite it as root 3 pi over 6 minus 1 equals b. That's equivalent. You could even, if you wanted to, get a common denominator and write this as a single fraction, but I'll just leave it like that for now. So my final answer for this question, y equals, my slope was negative root 3, x plus my b value is root 3 pi over 6 minus 1. So that is the equation of the tangent line to my original function at the point where the x value is pi over 6. Okay, that's it for our first lesson of finding derivatives of trig functions. We'll do more practice of these in the next lesson.